Let's start with a little experiment. I'm going to ask you to try to visualize in your mind six cubes forming a pyramid inside of a bigger cube. Can you try to visualize them? Six cubes forming a pyramid inside of a bigger cube. Do you have it? Do you have it? All right. This is what I had in mind. And, and what I just did is uh, show you how sketching is a way to actually communicate a three-dimensional idea or concept. And, and sketching is one of the tools that you can use uh, to, um, um, to use 3D literacy. 3D literacy is this ability to create, communicate, and materialize ideas in 3D. And as a designer, I learned how to use sketching, uh, 3D software, or model making to, to become 3D literate. And the thing is, it's a pretty important skill in the world we live in. Um, look at all the objects around you. Um, they've been created, like 90% of them have been created using 3D software, from your phone, to your shampoo bottle, to your car, to most of the things around us. And, and it's, a, it's, it's been created by a really small niche of people, designers, architects, um, engineers. And, and it's, a, a really, it's really amazing what you can do today when you are 3D literate. For example, 3D printing. We had a great talk this morning about the possibilities, but frankly, it's an amazing technology. In a matter of minutes, you could have an ID and hold, in, hold it in your hands. And now you can print in all sorts of, of materials. It's getting cheaper. But the thing is, it shouldn't be only in the hands of designers, engineers, architects, um, because we all have ideas. And we might not think that we're all creative, but um, if you're not convinced that we all can have ideas, think of all the crazy details that our brains can come up with when we dream at night. It's something that is just too easy to discard, that we, we, we tend to believe that we cannot uh, form ideas. But I think it's, it's, a, it's something that is just um, part of who we are. Um, and, and really, I, I, I believe that ideas combined with 3D literacy can bring a big change. But I agree with you that these skills are, are, are tough, tough to learn. The learning curve is, is steep. Um, and, and technology alone, or uh, the, the, the reduction of the cost alone, are not going to change this. Um, so with my colleagues uh, at Gravity Sketch, we try to investigate what were the, the, the opportunities to lower the barrier to entry to 3D literacy, how to make it more accessible to millions of people. Um, and so we created uh, a tool. It's an iPad app uh, where you can create based on sketching. Uh, it's for sharing ideas and for uh, quickly creating things at early stage of creation, giving easy access to 3D printing, regardless of, of your age or your abilities. It's just a, an easier way to, to get started into 3D creation. Um, but what's, what was interesting for us was to, to try to, uh, to guide the creation of this tool uh, through an investigation of what was wrong with the existing tool. Um, and I want to share with you some of the insights that, that, that led us through this journey. Um, we, we all uh, come from a background of uh, design, engineering, and manufacturing in the team. So we all knew the frustration of using this, this existing software when you want to be creative and you know that you're going to have to like, sit in front of a computer and, and just click. Um, so we found that there were three main problems that we could like, flip around to, to really make something more engaging. And, and, and we found that the tools were too complex, that they were uh, too boring, and that they didn't feel human. Um, this complexity, it's something that we just realized because our brains don't work like software. Um, and, and looking at people who have uh, like written theories about this, we got really interested in Howard Gardner, and he, he came up with the theory of multiple intelligences. And his theory states that we all have different sets of intelligences that we use for different situations. For example, we have the logical intelligence, which we use when we solve a math equation. Or we have the linguistic intelligence, which we use to communicate. Um, we have the kinesthetic intelligence, which we use when we learn how to ski or play basketball. And the one that was really important for us was the spatial intelligence, the mind's eye, this ability to to visualize something in your head, like an idea, you just, it's just there. And you can turn it around, you can look at it from different perspectives. Um, but 
the problem with these multiple intelligences is that very often you have to translate between one and another. And I hope it's something that you experienced earlier on when I tried to describe verbally what I was thinking of and asking you to visualize it in your mind. And there is this disconnection because um, uh, they, they require to use these different intelligences. And when this happens inside of the tool for, for creating in 3D, that can discourage a lot of people. So going back to the, to the, the traditional tool, uh, like, the, like 3D software that, that are used today in the industry, uh, we realized that there was a, a heavy layer of, of logical intelligence in these tools. Very often, it, it, fun it, it works around um, uh, like steps, very sequential um, way to work, where you have to create the first thing to lead to a second and a third, and the result is very disconnected from this, this sequence. And we realized that there was a lot of linguistic uh, barriers as well. All these functions have names that are really disconnect fr disconnected from what they represent. There's drop-down menus, and there's just these uh, th these tools don't use the intelligence that really matter for visual thinkers. Um, so for us, we, we tr started to look at other interactions, and we found that sketching was something that was actually much more comfortable for visual thinkers. It's something that is very direct, that is related to the actual space. Um, so that's something that we really wanted to, to, to change and embed in our tool. A and sketching is has this potential to be like a quick note-taking uh, 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 action, but bringing it to the digital world and creating in 3D was something that was very exciting. Another part of, of the frustration comes from the fact that this software can be very boring. And if any of you ever uh, sat in front of, of SolidWorks or another uh, software, you know that uh, it's, it's something that is very perf performance-oriented. And it's great when you're making a, a, like an airplane that has to be uh, like perfectly defined. But for the early stage of creation, it's something that is just discouraging people from, from getting started. Um, so our inspiration for this came from things such as Lego or Minecraft, tools that have this playfulness, that are fun to use, and have brought hundreds of millions of people in, in, in engaging with, with creation. Um, for example, Minecraft has 100 million users. That's more users than all other 3D software combined. Um, and for us, we wanted to have this playfulness in our tool so that people could feel that it's actually fun to engage with your ideas and, and, and really focus on what matters, what you're creating. The last thing is uh, that the, the result of, of these tools, they don't feel human. Uh, it's perfect, perfect shapes, perfect squares, patterns that are completely mathematical. And, and while it could be fine for some things, but we felt, we felt that when you start to hand draw 3D uh, shapes, when you start to hand draw 3D objects, you, you start to engage with crafting in the digital world. And some of these qualities in these objects, they make, us, they make them matter most, more for us. Um, and so we got really excited in exploring your style and your own hand signature in the 3D, in the 3D space. And I think that the future of 3D creation is going to be uh, uh, changing because of the platforms are changing as well. And, and that's why we chose to be on, on a tablet, because tablets, they follow you where creativity really happens. And frankly, we're not really creative when in front of a computer. That's everywhere else that we're creative. And, and they're cheap. They're like there's a billion people who have, ha who have had access to tablets, so it's an like an amazing new m media for people to, to actually start to create. Um, but something that's also very uh, exciting for us is the rise of virtual reality and augmented reality. This year is going to be a big year with the launch of Oculus Rift and a bunch of other, and we think that it's going to change the way we consume 3D content it's going to also drive the amount of content that needs to be created, and it's going to be an opportunity for us to get started with, with new creation um, experiences in a very immersive environment. So uh, this is just a few examples of the first things that, that were created through our platform. Uh, this is a space pony that was created by a seven years old, and it's really cool. I love it. 
Um, and it, like, but also, if you spend more time, you can create very delicate things. Um, this here is a 3D world that was created by like, some people we invited over a weekend who had never created anything in 3D. And, and we transformed their 3D worlds into an indie game. And that was just such a, like, an interesting experience to explore the, the minds of these people through what they created. Um, but some things that, are, that can be more uh, like, uh, 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 oriented towards uh, functionality, such as note taking. Uh, with tablets, you could imagine to take notes on site, add this extra layer of information so that there is communication happening more efficiently uh, throughout uh, the communication phase. Um, but looking a bit further into what uh, 3D creation could unleash uh, when it's combined with, with uh, easy access, I think that there's some extremely uh, interesting examples happening with the makers movement today already. And for example, things that would have never been developed by companies because there's not enough profit to make or because they need to be cost too customized. When you give the power to people to actually create their own things, it can have an amazing impact in their own life, like in uh, 3D printed prosthetics. Um, and this is something that is not only uh, happening for, for these kind of examples, but there's places where there's professionals who don't have uh, designers or engineers around, but they still need to create things in 3D. In this lab, they had to like, improvise with, with Legos to create a rig, and who knows, this could be the next big science discovery. So making this part of a regular set of, of skills could really have an impact in lots of different ways. A very important uh, aspect as well is, is the, like, the access to these new tools to artists, because uh, we, we think that it can be an enabler of creativity and that we can all start to really explore something new and, and some new ways of representing our society. Um, and, and on big scale projects, uh, there is an amazingly uh, uh, complex structure to make communication flow through everyone and share this big vision and deliver. But how can we tackle more complexity if we are not able to communicate in 3D in an easier way? And, and miscommunication is the biggest additional cost and source of delay in construction. So um, to finish, I would like to make the parallel with, uh, for 3D literacy with code literacy um, and how uh, the like, cheap electronics and easier languages for programming, they brought to us the Silicon Valley and they brought to us like, incredible products that changed our life so in, in such an unprecedented and presented way. And I think that today, with cheaper 3D printing, AR and VR that are around the corner, and easier access to 3D creation tools, we are going to see the same kind of changes. We're, we're going to see some big change. And I think that education is going to be one of these places where people are going to take these skills for granted. Um, and I think that if we can help dreamers become innovators by taking this leap of faith of sharing their ideas, putting it out there and like materializing them, we might see some big change. Thank you.